Salute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who's doing stuff? I'm going to do something other than mm -hmm. Snapchat. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I do your internet? Yeah. Who won? You Rains here. Yeah. Yeah. If I have something. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, uh, awkward. Rains here. Okay. 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 So, soapbox. Soapbox. Um, time is 7.20, mm -hmm. 7.20 starting now, and then we'll go into the next stuff. So, Soapbox has begun. How long do we give to Soapbox now? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Three minutes each? Usually half hour. Well, because it's usually like the first half hour. <laughs> Yeah, this will be from like 7 to 7.30. Okay. I guess I'll ask, and given that it's a small group, is there, basically we've got two options. We can go till 7.30 for soapbox and have 15 minutes of soapbox time, or we get a full half an hour of soapbox time. Um, I'm going to ask that to do a quick temp check. If, you're, if you prefer 15 minutes, can you show your support of 15 minutes? It, and if you prefer half an hour, can you show your support of half an hour? Um, like six to three. Six to three. Is everybody comfortable doing 15 minutes then? Well, we have two more people entering in, so let's maybe get their vote. We're asking if we want to do 15 minutes of soapbox until 7.30 or half an hour of soapbox until 7.45-ish. Um, do you... Uh, if, if, if it goes, uh, you know, it can go just as long as it needs to go, and it could be less than half an hour, but, you know, like 20, but, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's going to fill up the whole time. Okay. Are we, is, then can we, is there consensus that let, let's go up to a half an hour as long as it takes, understanding it may be less? Yeah. Is there support for that? Mm -hmm. All right, that seems to be the limit, mm -hmm. so we're going to do that. share like um, kind of like an outside perspective in a way um, basically an email from someone um, who's not like you haven't seen it occupied but has you know contacted us via our different methods um, I just want to so basically uh, January 2nd someone emailed us uh, basically saying they were kind of like wondering if they would be people in our group that would be interested in signing a petition um, to basically restrain um, elected officials from gaining capital gains while they're in office. I'm like, you know, we might have, I responded saying we might have some people that might support such a petition. Um, and this was a couple weeks ago and never heard back from the person. I basically was asking, do you have a petition? Have you created one? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, got a response the other day. And this is the part I want to read. Uh, thank you so much for your response and support. Like most people, I did not follow through. They're referring to the petition. They didn't create a petition. Uh, therefore, I do not have a petition to be signed. But because you responded and allowed me to be heard, I realize that I have much in common with your movement and I'm looking forward to the next step for me, which is to visit your movement and review information not available through cable sources. Uh, if I can make one small contribution of support to your movement at this moment, it might be to let you know that your message is being heard by lots of people, like me, that you may not be aware of. In addition, when I communicate with other people who, without realizing it, are parts of other groups who appear to be in opposition to your movement, surprisingly, they easily hear your message through me. It's so difficult for the average person to sort through all the information coming at them from all directions. People like me, who appear different from the typical occupier, can play an important role by communicating your message on all the local level with, all, with, with other people who look like me. This local communication of your message is taking place, perhaps to a much greater degree than you could possibly realize. I want you to know because it demonstrates that your message is powerful, is being heard, and you are making a difference. Your success may, 
also be a form of encouragement for you to continue. Uh, goes into a long story that I won't get into now, but um, then there's a little, the above story may not be so clear, um, I thought it was pretty clear. Uh, the purpose of the story, however, is to let you know that your message is being communicated, heard, and supported in ways you may not have ever imagined. Thank you. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, I know I've been one for Soapbox, but this is um, first time for everything, anything. Um, I've been away for a while, but um, not away from family and in spirit, um, just actively working still. Um, I told my parents the other night, uh, well, I'm going to tell y'all something about me I have never shared. Um, it's a little shorty. Um, had a spiritual awakening as a young man, and um, mom thought I was going to be that preacher of the family, and this and that and that. But as I became a teenager, things changed. I, I strayed away, away and pulled away from the church. <clears throat> but I never left my spiritual practices and my spiritual place. And, 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 and what I'm getting at is that I told um, my parents that I say, um, I am in my calling. I said, I'm an activist. I said, I'm an activist. And I, um, I, and I work with the community. This is my ministry. And I feel like when we came all together from Monroe Park to Canal Plaza, we answered a spiritual calling. You know, um, I don't know, atheist, atheist, Muslim, Christian, whatever your faith denomination, whatever, this is a spiritual gathering, you know, without being in this building. Where we come together at? <clears throat> For me, the things that have come place have come have taken place in the last few weeks are not so much disturbing, um, not so much surprising, not so much um, um, remove us, derail us, um, stained us, and anything. It helped evolve us because, see, I think it's a process that we would not and could not avoid. It was going to happen, and it has happened, and that don't mean the spirit dies. You know, um, firm believer, you know, you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's dirty, but that baby, is some good there. And um, I just want us to be aware as a family that um, Facebook is a Pandora box. Be careful. You know what I'm saying? I want y'all to realize that it's real work still to be done. I want y'all to be unselfish. I want y'all to remember we will be unsung heroes. Don't worry about the fame or the, 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 the pats on the back. It, but the work is still be done. It doesn't need to be done. And we will get the credit. Somebody will remember. Uh, study world history. And study other revolutions. And be aware of what is going on and why. And the real reasons behind those things that we struggle against. I want to share something. This just for me. Um, I was going to do it differently, but I decided to do it differently. I'm going to do, I want to read something that I commented on on Facebook. Um, I never came up a, a member of Facebook until I joined this movement because I knew Facebook was a Pandora box. I salute Graham because he already knew that. You know what I'm saying? And everything. But um, it's a very powerful tool. And um, in the same way, a car is a very powerful tool. There's laws that guide how we operate and move in that. Y'all, uh, you know what I'm saying? You drive the car, the car don't drive you. So even with Facebook, stay in control. You know, stay in control. I want to read this real quick and I'm out your, out your way. Um, a person, and I, and I read this, I, I could read all of it, and I, but I'm not. The person is here. And um, it's open and put on Facebook, so I'm not doing anything behind nobody back or exposing anything. But I'll read my comment back to um, someone saying that this is done. This is dried up. This is over. And I said this, and I just going that close what they said, but that's not what they said, but to make it short. But this is my response. The heart of a man cannot leave his body without some strange act by this man or violent trauma. The spirit of an activist is not in his words alone, it consumes his body. The word occupy can be stricken from the English language, it would not change a thing. The same work and path that we with good faith and good intention would still have taken Canal Plaza. Drip, drip, drip goes the leaky feet features that weakens the house plumbing. Oh well, no more high water bill. I'm a city boy that was raised by a country mother and grandmother, and they told me, Mom, 
beauty and good is in the garden, as well as snakes. Don't run from the garden. When you go, take the shovel and cut his head off. <laughs> You want to get the uh, I like Megan this summer. This has no beginning and it has no end. This has been since we showed up. starting to fracture, can smell it in the air, can feel it on a 70 day, 70 degree day in January. We know something's wrong. We're real good at pointing our fingers out there. We know that we gotta get our ass in here and take it out. But what seems to be missed is that you can't take it on out there unless you take it on in here. And the way we have allowed Occupy Richmond to be untended, to be undisciplined, to be distracted by debate over radical inclusiveness when someone by their conduct radically excludes himself from everything we have collectively said was who we are. And then when the forest fire comes roaring down on us, people back here pulling weeds or having philosophical debates or minutia. When the baby wakes up in the middle of the night screaming, that's not the time to have a discussion as to whether it's best to let them cry it through and they achieve rugged self-independence. It's not the time to talk about whether or not we should go to them and hug them and cuddle them and, and, and take care of them and they'll feel more loved and secure and open. It's a time to just go and act and you might even find that there's a load in the diaper. It's time for Occupy Richmond to change its diaper. For myself, I'm moving on. I go back to that space that has no beginning and has no end. I'm feeling called elsewhere. And I really don't know what else to say. Um, the example for me of it's at the core of what's in that diaper that needs to be changed. Was down at Kanawha when it was sleety and raining and windy. And a couple other people and I made a shopping list and we went out and we got poles and I brought my twine and my nails and a big tarp to put up. And a couple people unloaded. And I walked the camp when we got everything unloaded. And there were a fair amount of people there. I was only able to get showing up, grabbing a hold of the homeless population. I had to interrupt philosophical conversations, debates, concerns, strategies to somehow repeatedly with some of the same individuals. Wake up. I mean, physically. Come on, we got this. It was like pulling teeth. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how we allow ourselves to gain a meeting with the mayor, get an offer to be on a poverty commission, and then scorn it and think we're wise and savvy by going out and camping in his yard and setting loose when anyone who was at Kanawha knew what happened. 
Whoa! Management problems. Get violence. Whoa! Stick my head in the sand. How do you, how, how, what is that? Well, it's a politician trying to self-serve and, and make himself look better and co-opt us and buy us out. Maybe. Maybe it was a possibility for why savvy, really front-edge input and embarrass the motherfucking shit out of them for how stupid they've been doing it and show a new pathway. Maybe it's putting a feather in Dwight's peacock tail feathers and he'll get reelected and and why? We don't even think we should go to the ballot. We don't even think we should vote. Maybe. I don't know, but I just know that the taste of it right now doesn't suit me. And if my life were an hourglass, I've spent my time placing my grains of sand here and there, and, and in large measure, I'm pleased. Not with all of them. <laughs> Anybody who's been up close to me knows that I'm far from perfect. There's some of them that I'm ashamed of. Some of them, not shame in the sense of guilt, but shame in the sense that it woke me up what I did and how I did and where I placed those grains of sand. Given a long life in my family, I'm reckoning I got about two thirds of them left in place. And with every placement of each grain of sand in my hourglass, the remainder becomes that much more precious. And in all honesty, I have to say that Right now, they're too precious to do here. As the one who invited the occupied to this building as a member of this Quaker meeting, I'm conflicted right now. I, I am conflicted. I'm not feeling comfortable no longer being part of and not dealing with it in some fashion. So, what I would request as the one who invited you in, invited Occupy in here, that you have one more GA and please um, consider going elsewhere. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask you? Um, sure. <laughs> that's a request, but that's nothing. No, I, I, it's just a request. Oh, okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm asking. You didn't consider it. What purpose would that serve you? It would relieve me from a conflict that I have being the one who, as a member of this meeting house and a member of Occupy, of not having to be in the situation where I'm asked why to have to tell them what Occupy has become from my experience. I have. Mm, okay. I mean, what I would say to them, Mark, <coughs> to, be, to be honest, I've already thought this long and hard because this wasn't an easy thing for me to get up and say, is that I would say, I have nothing to say. Watch the videos of the GAs held in your meeting house and then you make up your own mind. I really don't even, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say anything to, I don't want to have to explain why I've left. And the only thing I could say was look for yourself. Now, should, should y'all want to make application and you're welcome to, but as the one who invited, I feel a conflict, and that's my thought on how I can be relieved from that conflict. To, to clarify, are you saying that your request is that this be the last GA? Or no, Sunday. One more. Sunday. Thank you for clarifying. That that would that my request. You know, I I that, I'm not I'm not throwing y'all out. I'm not, I'm just saying I have a real conflict, and this is my best sense of respectfully um, resolving that conflict, respectfully to you guys and respectfully to my meeting house. Um, if if y'all want to come back and talk to me about that at some point, I, I, I would entertain that. But that's that's my, my the only thing I can think of at the moment. Uh, Mr. I have a question about, I know obviously you've thought long and hard and I think you um, have talked to other uh, members and so forth, but are you going under the assumption that Chris Dorsey is still part mm -hmm. of Occupy? It's way bigger than that. I mean, 
just look at recordings of GAs that have been held here. It's not just Ms. Dorsey. It, it's how we conduct ourselves. It's what we allow to be in our gatherings. It's, it's the thing that leaves me feeling the taste of Orba is not my taste right now. And maybe someday it will be. I mean, I, 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 I don't have any expectations, but that's, it, no, it, it, to be short, which I'm usually not, no, it's not. Um, so I would like to address some things that people have been commenting on tonight, perhaps more directly. And um, please forgive me, I hate public speaking and I don't want to offend anyone here. And I don't want anyone here to take what I say personally. But our behavior, last GA and the Sunday before that, both occasions was absolutely appalling as a collective. We failed to be able to make decisions. We failed to provide a safe environment. We failed to respect each other. And we've continued to do this over and over again. And a lot of people who blocked realize that Chris Dorsey is out and their blocks were upheld but left because of the behavior of the collective and it demonstrated to them some serious internal flaws that we have not addressed and we seem incapable of addressing. So a lot of people you don't see here tonight People who are here at every GA, who put in a lot of groundwork, who do so much for us, are not here, not because their block didn't go through, but because they felt disrespected and alienated. And it's very hard to see that from an organization that I think has so much potential and I had such hope for, and still have hope for. But we have to change. And we have to start looking at our own behavior and how it needs to change. Uh, I'll pass up my time. Does anybody else want to um, do any uh, free speech? Soapbox? I'm Alan Levenberg. Um, don't call me Alan because he's Alan right here. You can call me Lev, a lot of my friends call me that. Um, most of you don't know me. There's only a couple of people in here who do know me. I came to two or three of the very first GAs. And then I came to a couple uh, of the occupations at, at uh, Canal. Uh, and almost the very first GA that I came to in Monroe Park. I've been to Monroe Park many times. Um, Chris Dawson attacked me. Not physically, but verbally, unjustifiably. He also attacked a very good man that I came with, Robin Fulton, who some of you know. Robin is an internationally known uh, worker for peace winner of awards, international awards for his, for his efforts to uh, decommission small arms. <coughs> and Chris attacked him. He doesn't even know it. Uh, he never came back. I came to one or two more. And uh, I saw a lot of behavior that I didn't like. And I mentioned it to someone. I don't know who it was. I don't see the person here right now. But I said, this, this fellow's trouble. Uh, I'm very busy. And uh, some of you know some of the things that I'm involved in. And they have kept me from being actively involved in Occupy. Although I've followed it very closely, both here in Richmond and uh, around the world. And I support it intensely. I've heard many people say they've waited 
many years for an effort like this to start happening. And uh, I've waited many years also, decades. I will take you through my history. But I did come back last, at the last GA, because um, I was interested in the situation that we were going to face that night. And uh, I didn't know that it was going to be this block thing that was so serious that seven of those nine people aren't even here tonight. One has come to say he's never coming back again or, or not unlikely to come back in the near future. I don't know what Rain, Rain's position is, but so serious that they're not here, that they're not here today. I'm not going to repeat the things that Alan said, but I agree with you very much of what he said. I agree with very much of what you said also. I don't know your name. I was appalled also. I sat right over there where you're sitting right now, gentlemen. I was appalled. I didn't speak. I didn't speak because I haven't been here. And I don't know <laughs> what you've been talking about in regard to a situation like that. And I didn't feel that I had the, um, the right to really speak then because I didn't really understand. But what I saw the other night was appalling to me. These people came in with a, a list of offenses. And they're real offenses. And I've been offended in many of those ways by that man, Chris Dorsey. And I know Chris for a long time. I, I'm one of the, uh, uh, not founders, but uh, I'm a very early WRIR uh, volunteer. I joined WRIR about six months before we went on the air. And I was a very heavy volunteer over there. And that's, that's where I'm at now for over five years over five years, and I played many roles there. Chris accused me the other night when I was sitting over there of kicking him out of WRIR. I have spoken for Chris many times. I've spoken for him at WRIR for his right to say what he wants to say. I've, I've spoken for him in the street when police were called to move him during um, Earth Day, a phony day, but it's, a, it's Earth Day, I went to it, I went to it, and uh, uh, whatever the organization is, the, the business that funds it now, Chris was speaking against them, and they got very upset, and they called the police, and the police came over that they were going to move him from there, and I reminded the police that this was public property, were you there? No, I heard about it. Public property. Citizen has a right to speak on public property, and they backed away. So I know Chris for a long time. These people came with a list of offenses. And I heard five hours. I sat here for five hours. Five hours. I don't go to long meetings, because I'm a busy man. I'm leaving, I'm leaving on Wednesday. We're building toilets in West Africa. I'm project manager for that, so I have to go there and and uh, do that. I'm a busy man. Five hours I sat here. And I heard so much process. And I, you know, it was, it was really, it was really difficult to stay there. I'm glad, uh, I don't see the fellow who brought the food. Wow. <laughs> 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 Now people stood aside, I'm not sure what's standing aside, there was, that discussion was going on when I came in, whether it was, whether it was an abstention or a, or a, I don't care. Some people voted against it. I didn't hear one of those people say why they were voting against it. Does anybody remember any of that? Yeah. Why people voted against that action? No. I don't remember that. So caught up in process. Do you remember? I do. I did. One of the concerns was that there was no effective way of enforcing the decision. And they I felt that it was. You're right. Ephemeral. 
we'll got an enforcement we'll petition that. there. We'll okay, okay, so yes, there was no effective way of enforcing it. Well, how are you going to enforce it anyway? If you kick, a, if you kick someone out of this organization and they show up in the door there, and this is a, if this is a public meeting, what are you going to do, call the cops? So it's, yes, but it's, it's, is that a, is that a, is that an argument against the action that was asked for? I don't think so. So, anyway, you might see more of me. Um, in respect to the body, I'm going to ask if we want to extend time. I just need another minute. No, for the whole time, this time. Oh, I see. Do, do we want to extend time for everyone? For okay, thank okay. you. Um, I would ask, I would ask you, not to leave, but you know, there, there's a role you can play somewhat disconnected from the, from the intensity of your involvement to this one. You know, your, your valuable contribution. I mean, everybody is a valuable contribution. Even Mr. Chris Dorsey who's made us think about who we are and how we're going to move forward from this point. And I would ask Rain also, I don't know what she's considering, but I would ask both of these people and the other people, you can speak to them please and, and uh, uh, find a role, find the role for them, even if it's in the back bench there, to, to, to remain involved somehow with this organization because there's, a, there's an awful lot to do. And so it's, <clears throat> oh, I don't really have anything paired in my head as of yet. Um, but I want to start off by saying I made a decision last time to moderate. There's a reason for that. I saw this would be a contentious issue, and I wanted, I thought I might be able to both make that easier and make that smoother and then show the GA, if I was successful, how to make that smoother. I thought, okay, if I put my effort into making this issue go smoothly, maybe we can go on past this and heal this as a body. Um, and right up until that, and for the previous GA, there was um, a few people that I know, and myself included, we called the, uh, the events that were happening, the Chris Dorsey show. And it was kind of chiding at the moment because he, I think everyone realizes, but I realized something afterwards when every time I went out to an Occupy event, there was the Chris Dorsey show. He wasn't even there, but there was the Chris Dorsey show. We all talked about him, couldn't talk about anything else. I would leave a room, go to another room, and there was the Chris Dorsey show. Everyone talking about this person. I can't escape it, it feels like sometimes, and I'm just, how do I put it, I want to remind everyone that this is an isolated incident. The more energy we put into just talking about it, I realize people, people like are drawn to drama, but please remember that it is just talking about it won't help anything. Unless you're actually progressing towards something, please just remember that <coughs> Move aside, free up your brain, and let's do something for actual positive change. And this is just, I, I feel like I've been sucked into this and very little has been actually being done. And I was hoping, I, did, I had no hopes that this GA would actually be terribly worthwhile, I guess. It would actually, I, I felt like it would have a lot of weight from that. And I'm really hoping that the next GA is very productive. Please let us make this GA the time where we kill this beast. And everyone, if you can, tell yourself that I am not going to put any more energy into having this discussion in the same words as it's been minced out time and time again. And let's move on and make some change. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good word that I don't have. Thank you. Anybody else want to be in the box? Terry Grief. I'm Barry, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, just very brief. Um, 
And I've been trying to make sense of this whole Occupy movement thing, and I think what it boils down to, best I can determine, is what we're all about is fundamental social transformation. We know that we won't make any changes by a, a protest a day, a week, or a month, but with this kind of effort being made by so many people here and in hundreds of other cities, we have a real chance to affect some change. And what we're about right now is taking the baby steps of that change, learning to work together, trying to figure out what is effective to get things done, to be just, to treat people decently, and um, just really to work all of this out. We're in kind of a gestation period, and, and we're really in that and doing it. So I would encourage everybody just to keep at that and uh, we have a long road to go. That's a good one. Ron. Behind you. This one? Both. Ron and then Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to speak following up on last uh, Sunday's meeting, which was kind of uh, obviously not optimal. Um, the thing I, I disagree with, and I... And I uh, I want to make sure I make my point because I wasn't sure if it was crass. The evening was so confused that Chris Dorsey is just Chris Dorsey, and there are a million people like or worse than Chris Dorsey. And if we have a policy about Chris Dorsey, we're missing the point. You know, mm -hmm. we have to have a policy that says, if, for instance, if I if, if you see me jumping up and screaming and raving, you have to all turn and say, I'm sorry, we don't need that. If you, if you pass a law, no one's going to enforce it. It's still going to go back to us saying, sit, sit down and shut up for leave. We're going to have to do that individually. Or as, as you said the other day, Graham, we don't need leader less, we need leader full. Everybody has to stand up and say, hey, the book stops here. I can see this guy is not going to help. If he can't get the point, we all have to kind of, you know, I think the numbers alone will be useful. It may be, and I'm not a psychologist, it may be that Chris feeds on that kind of thing. In which case, we have to be able to find maybe some other measure. But we can't just say, let's get this guy out of here. He's not the cause. He's a symptom. He's what happens to people when you leave him alone, don't give him support, don't give him medication. And he, he feels like if he's right, the world is messed up. He just doesn't have a real solution. Neither do we. But he's not going to help us that much. So I hope we can collectively say we're all going to rise to the occasion and, and recognize, like when something happens, we'll all say, I don't know, it might be off protocol. I'll have to check with the facilitators. But to, to just say, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, is, that isn't progress. That isn't progress. I don't know how you'd say it. Facilitators should probably. Could, <laughs> yeah, it would be a point of process. It would be a yeah, process. Yeah, we, we'd have to all just be able to say, I'm sorry. We, we need to cut through the chaff and get, get to the actual wheat. Because we have, there's things to be done. There are, there are, there are that, not that many people in our movement at this point in time. And I think if we communicated effectively that we know that there are better ways to do things, that people would work with us. But we're never gonna get that done if we spend a lot of time in here, you know, um, scratching our butts, you know, worrying about Chris Dorsey's. There are a million Chris Dorsey's. If he can stop us, anybody can stop us. We've got to get beyond that. We should put our attention outside. And Chris Dorsey should be like just, just a little footnote, you know, somebody who trip over and come in the door. He, sh he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be our cause celeb, you know. Anyway, that's my two cents. Thank you. Ron? Oh, um, I don't know much about um, psychology and stuff, but I just think that maybe we're going the opposite direction, you know, by asking him to leave and stuff like that, that maybe by actually listening to him and giving him his you know, so he could be listened to and feel valued and see if he would quiet down and then respect us in return. I thought maybe if we respected him, um, maybe not, maybe I'm totally wrong, but I just thought, you know, if we just quiet down and listen to him and say, okay, we want to hear what you got to say, and just gave him the floor for a while, and then until he finished whatever it is that he wanted to say, and then, you know, give him some feedback and then continue the meeting or something like that. Um, just in the, just kind of in answer to what you said, uh, my, my dad was a, um, 
he he worked at uh, St. Joseph's Villa on the road, uh, which you know, tr uh, home for troubled kids. And he said the thing with uh, with like mental instability or illness or whatever is that you constantly, if someone is, uh, if someone is, the, I guess I'm gonna call it the Chris Dorsey. I don't know, but like. Uh, if someone is acting out like that, you always have to put the ball back in his court. You have to constantly make it you, make it about him, make it about like, like if he's attacking you, always, and this is, this, I, you know, it's not limited to Chris Dorsey, but that was the, that was what he told me is in his expertise, you, you always put the situation that they're throwing at you back on them. In, with words. That's all I have to say. And it's okay. With, um, we've been also, we're actually way over time. So, uh, like, um, so if you want to do something quick. Yeah. All right. And can you be quick? Awesome. Um, I just ignore the guy. Uh, and I've never had any problems with him. I don't care. Um, you ever go to like uh, call somebody and they're trying to call you at the exact same time and you go like start to dial a number and you hear like, another dial back, you're like, what's going on here? You dial again, you hear another dial, and, and then you're like, hello? And it's your friend, like they're calling you? That's like the coolest thing. There's some coffee downstairs. Let <laughs> 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 uh, me be real quick. Um, Something that I talk about with you all personally, one-on-one -on -one sometimes, but I just like to take a moment and remind people that if you're getting to a point where you can't kind of keep your eye on the prize and the ultimate goal of while we're here and you're feeling really run down by like what's happening in a particular GA or an interaction that's happening, that that's a sign that you're kind of getting to <coughs> burnout and that it's time for you maybe to in whatever way you can kind of take a step back and take a peaceful moment for yourself. And that's okay to do, and you don't need to justify it to the group if you just need some like personal space. It doesn't need to have a reason or a time manner. Also, when it's cold out, I want all of you to wear hats and jackets. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> but in general, take care of yourself. I'm going to jump into my answer real quick. Um, just really fast. Um, there was a really stupid article that RVA Magazine put out um, about a week ago, um, and what happened in response to this, a friend of mine um, put out a call for 500 Richmonders to give $25 to Planned Parenthood, and I put, that, we put, I put up an event for, for him on Tuesday at 5.30. Um, when I left the house tonight, we had about 176 already, um, and tomorrow's payday. So, if anybody needs any information for that, see me afterward. How many is that? About 176. No. Uh, 176 times 25. 3,000. Yeah. Um, I, I absolutely love that Facebook thing and all of that, but... So, I don't know, like, especially with the way things are going, there's a lot of, there's one of the things that's going on is people are upset with the amount of time we spend on process, but people also get upset when we don't do the process the way it's being done. So I wanted to point out that, Ron, you did two things kind of weird. You jumped out of your facilitation role without asking and jumped to a place that wasn't on the agenda to make an announcement that was really sweet. But I just want to take a temp check on that. Who thinks that, like, who thinks that that felt good? And who felt things that felt bad? It was the question you asked first. Yeah. <laughs> who, thinks, who thinks that felt good? What he said was nice. Right. Yeah. Who thinks that felt bad? Mm. All right. I just, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I just want to see what the body thinks about that. That's all I'm doing. Point of information? I, I, it's not a point of information. I was just putting a finger up, but. <laughs> <laughs> so shame on me. But. He's also the guy that said that we had to stop setboxing, so that plays into it too. It's like, oh, he's going to tell us to stop setboxing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't supposed to be a facilitator, and when I, when I uh, said I would do stack, I was like, if I can make an announcement. And I thought that was okay, so I did ask that in the beginning. Uh, but asking me, or just the body, though? I, I, I kind of like made an announcement as I was walking up to do it. I want to stop it. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, yeah, so uh, as seeing as that, that was fun and people like it, we could uh, do slight mix-ups every, every once in a while and people might think it's rad. Little things like reverse formal and informal proposals. <laughs> <laughs> To, to that point, there's actually been a request to move up the discussion of consensus, the consensus discussion in front of proposals today, because the idea is that there may be some valuable information there that would lead into discussion around proposals. So I'm going to ask the body, is that little switch, there's a point of information. And that discussion will also get us walking around. So there might be some walking involved. So the question is to the body, are you interested, are, are you okay with that swap from what we normally do? If you're okay with that, can you show you're okay with that? If you're not okay with it, can you show that you're not okay with it? I think we'll do that then. So but now we're going to flow into work group announcements. Does anybody have a work group announcement?